How do I avoid shaky upstrokes? How do I make my upstrokes smoother and thinner? And why my upstrokes don't seem thin enough? If you had any of these questions, then this video is for you. I'm gonna share with you three tips to get better upstrokes. So let's start writing. Tip number one to help you get smoother and better upshocks is to have the right tools and make sure you're using them correctly. And first, let's talk about brush pens. The brush pen that you're using matters. The upstrokes are gonna be proportional to the size of, of the tip of your brush pen. So for example, this one is a Tombow Fudenowski brush pen. This one is a hard tip. So when you're going to do the upstrokes, you're gonna get very fine, thin upstrokes. This is true for pretty much all the small tip brush pens that you have. When you go up, you're gonna get thin upstrokes, but you're gonna notice a difference when you use larger, a larger size brush pen. For example, when you use this, this is a Tombow Dua brush pen, which as you can see, it has a larger tip. So whenever you're gonna do an upshock, it's gonna be considerably thick, even though this is the upshock, it's gonna be thicker than the other two. And this is the same for other types of um, brush markers, like these are line sticks. The upshocks is gonna be even thicker than the dual brush pen. So that's one thing that you wanna keep in mind, that your brush pen matters. Sometimes it's not about doing super thin upshocks, it's just about being proportional to your your brush pen so for example when you go down with this one you're gonna see the difference on the upstrokes and the downstrokes and when you're using a small brush a pen when you go up you're gonna see a thinner upstroke but you're also going to see a much smaller downstroke so you can see the difference here and the difference here so that's one thing that you want to keep in mind so I'm gonna keep showing you the upshots with this Tombow Fudenowski brush pen, which is the pen that I do recommend for beginners. If for some reason you're not getting thin upshocks with the pen that you're using, try using this one or try using a different brush pen. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind is the way that you're holding the brush pen. So when you write normally, you will kinda of like do, if you see here, it's kinda of like a 90 degree. When you're doing modern calligraphy using brush pens, you wanna make sure that your pen is like sort of like in the middle right here on your hand. If you see right here is a 45 degree angle to your page. And this is gonna help you when you do the upstrokes. Since we're talking about having the right tools and making sure that you're using them correctly, let's talk about paper. You wanna make sure that the paper that you're using is smooth because that's what's gonna help your hand and your pen slide better when you're doing the upstrokes and you're gonna be able to create smoother upstrokes when you have the right kind of paper. The paper that I'm using right now is an HP 32 pound premium paper and I'm gonna show you how it compares to a regular printer paper. You might not see the difference in plain sight but the printer paper is not as soft and when you're doing the upstrokes I can definitely feel the difference when my pen is sliding up and also when I'm doing the letters it's not as smooth to do the transitions. Another reason why I don't recommend using your brush pens in regular printer paper is because they're gonna get damaged and fray a lot faster than when you're using premium paper or softer paper. I'm gonna go ahead and write the same word using the softer paper, the premium HP paper. As you can see here, my age is gonna slide a lot better. I can get my upstrokes a lot better and smoother, less shaky than when I was using the regular printer paper. So make sure you have the right kind of paper when you are practicing your calligraphy because that's gonna help you get smoother upstrokes. You might be able to notice the difference a little bit here, but the paper up top is the regular printer paper and the paper at the bottom is the softer paper and you can see the color difference between the two. The second tip that I have for you is to think ahead and know where your upshock is going to. So when you're doing your upshocks, your body can think ahead. So one of the things that can help you get smoother and thinner upshocks is thinking where your upshock is gonna go. Like not only when it's coming from, but also when it's gonna lead to. 
So for example here, I know when I do my downstroke, I know my upstroke is gonna start right here and it's gonna end right here. So you can either do a dot or do a mental note of where your upstroke is gonna go and that way when you're doing it, you do a downstroke and then you connect it to and because you know that your upstroke is gonna end up here, you can do a quick line and this is gonna help you for the upstroke to be smoother and thinner. Same when you go down, you know that your upstroke is gonna end up here so you can do a quicker line and then up here and that way you know when you go when you do a quicker motion your hand is going to be steadier this is a little trick that you can do to get better and smoother upstrokes and the one way that you can do this almost automatically is by practicing which leads me to my next step to get better upstrokes is practice practice and more practice I know this might not be what you wanted to hear, but I promise you, practice really makes a difference. To help you with your practice, I created this free worksheet, which is sort of like a continuation of my free calligraphy drills worksheet. If you haven't seen that one, make sure you check the video right here because I show you the basic calligraphy drills that you need to follow before you start creating letters or words. And to get access to this free practice worksheet, uh, you can go to my blog at bldesigns.com forward slash better upstrokes and I'm also going to put the link down below. And I just wanted to quickly mention that I created this worksheet and added these arrows to help you know where you should start and where you should finish your upstrokes. And I created this worksheet for the small brush pens, but you can also use your medium to large brush pens with it. Just keep in mind, like I said at the beginning, your lines are not gonna be as thin as when you use your small tip brush pen. this last drill it gives you a little sneak peek into flourishes which are embellishment that you do to your letters comment below and let me know if you would like to see a video on how to do flourishes to decorate your calligraphy And that is a quick demonstration of how you can use this worksheet to practice your upstrokes and how practice can help you get them smoother and thinner. Practicing your upstrokes and making sure that you get a smoother and thinner upstrokes really depends on so many different things like the amount of practice that you put in, your nutrition, hydration and stress. Before you start practicing your calligraphy, make sure you do a little check on yourself and your hand. So make sure that when you start practicing your calligraphy, you haven't had uh, that much coffee and you also have proper nutrition and hydration because this could also mean that your upstrokes are not going to be as smooth as you would like to. But as always, if your hand is shaky and that's the only time you have to practice your lettering, a little practice is better than no practice at all. I hope you found this video helpful to get better and smoother upstrokes in your star practicing today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe and share with your friends.